Oh, hey man, what's up? Hey, can we make this? Yeah, we can make this. Hey everyone, welcome to Let's Make, the show where we can sit down and make things from our favorite stories and characters. Today's episode, the webhead himself, the Spider-Man proto-suit from Spider-Man Homecoming. So if you finish studying and Aunt May's not gonna disturb you, let's get started. Let's first take a look at most of the materials we're gonna use. Oh gosh, sorry, I forgot to clean my room. We need a red hoodie, this one's small even though I'm a pretty tall guy. We need some long red socks and red wrist sweatbands. I also got a large red hoodie to match the fabric of the mask to the sweater. We need two Carolina blue colored underclothes, sweats, and a shirt. I also have a second pair that are a little bit thicker to use in colder weather. We'll need some gloves that have a red hand back and a black thumb, and some goggles that you can unscrew the eyes. Mine came with two lenses, one dark and one clear. Pretty nifty, huh? We also need some red slip-on shoes, some double-sided wire that I pulled from some computer cord, which measures about 0 0.105 in diameter, a Sharpie, and a sewing machine with thread. So the red sweatshirts, the red socks, and the thicker blue underclothes all came from a local shop called T-Mart. You know that place that has like every color of everything? That place. My gloves, shoes, normal blue underclothes, goggles, and sweatbands all came from Amazon. The links are all down below. The first thing we're going to do is take the small red sweatshirt and slice off the sleeves. You can cut each side continuously or you can do both layers together. That's up to you. Then there's two ways we can go about drawing the logo. Using a sharpie we can freehand it, but make sure you put something down so it doesn't bleed through. or we can use a paper template like this. I prefer to use the paper template, that way it keeps the spider symmetrical. Just make sure you put something down so the marker doesn't bleed through. Also, be mindful to color inside the flaps of the zipper, that way there's no red showing in the middle of the spider. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's hand drawn on purpose. Next, take some aluminum tape from the hardware store and cut it to the same size as the aglets on the end of the hoodie string. Stick them on and roll them around to give the illusion of metal tips. Then do the same on the other side. Now take the large red sweatshirt and cut out the back section, separating it from the hood and the sleeves, so we have one large piece of flat material. Be mindful of which side of the fabric you want to have facing out. For myself, I wanted to have what is normally the inside of the sweater facing out on the mask. Fold it in half and pin along the sides. I used a styrofoam mannequin head to trace this shape on the sweater, pinned the outline, and then carefully tried it on. Right about here is when I realized it wasn't going to work out. So I took it off, took out all the pins and offset the line about an inch bigger. I pinned the new line and tried it on again. This one fit pretty good. It also gave me a sweet mohawk. After the shape is set and fits well, Pin along most of the new line, leaving some room in the back open for a zipper. Then pull out the pins and trim off the excess fabric. Go ahead and try it on again just to make sure. Next we're going to measure our necks with a fabric ruler and copy that circle onto some flat fabric that I pulled from the sleeves after opening them flat. Then offset the circle by about 4 inches and cut out this weird looking shape. Pin this to the base of the neck on the mask on both sides, being mindful of which side of the fabric you want to be facing out. Then sew along this line. Trim off the extra fabric and again try it on.
Now we can sew in a zipper to close up the back of the mask. Check the description for a good tutorial on this. Once it fits how you like, put the goggles on over the mask and have a helper trace inside with a marker. You can see the line here just inside the goggles. Then make sure you show off your sweet Peter Parker hair. Take the mask back to the sewing machine and sew a dense line on the marks we just made around the eyes. Trim out the middle of those sections so the eye holes will be open and secure. Next put on the goggles, then the mask, and use some sewing pins, very carefully, to pin the elastic of the goggles in three places, both sides of the head and in the back above the zipper. You can see the pin here in the shadow of the elastic inside the mask. Sew a small line along those pins to tack the elastic in place only in those three spots. Next we can assemble the eyes. I used the glass inserts that came with my goggles, these white pieces of paper that I cut with my paper cutting machine, but you could also use like fabric mesh or quilting mesh, and lenses that were 3D printed to look like spidey frames. These could be done in paper, especially if you layered several pieces so that it looks like the lenses can move. To assemble in order from inside going out, it's the white paper layer, the glass layer, then the black lens layer. I made sure to clean off all the pieces, then set them inside the frame of the eye and screwed it on. Flip it over and... Hey kids, I'm Spider Man. You get this really wonky mask. Using your fingers, we can position the frames and gently screw on the eyes until they are symmetrical. Mark some dots on either side of the goggles and drill them out with a rotary tool big enough to fit your wires. Super glue these into the inside of the goggles, curve them around in a super cool way, and glue them to the edge of the eye frame like this. I trimmed off the extra and used a sharpie to cover up the white that super glue leaves behind. Do the same thing to the other side. Optionally, you can use a lighter to relax the wires in place so they're not under tension. Now originally for the shoes, I had this huge plan that I would tape off the soles of the shoes. I'd spray them with a sprayable rubber called Flex Seal. And they would look awesome. And they did. Until I wore them to my first public event and they decided to peel off. So I ended up buying another pair of shoes on Amazon that weren't as accurate, but came with black soles and fit for what I wanted on my suit. Both shoes are linked below. Next, put on the gloves and use a sharpie to draw on some web patterns. For my research, I think they should look like this. Hang in there, we're almost done. As for the web shooters, I decided to model and 3D print my own custom ones. I did this because I wanted to test out my idea of using a Chinese paper yo-yo as the web effect. And I think it turned out pretty well. If you'd like to print out your own web shooters like mine, you can purchase my web shooter kit on my Etsy shop, which is linked down below. It comes with an hour-long instructional video that shows you the ins and outs all the way from printing to the final product. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can also find these files on Shapeways, a company that will 3D print files and send them right to your door. If you don't want to do the web shooters using 3D printing, there are plenty of awesome tutorials out on YouTube. I've linked a few of my favorites down below. So after you add some web shooters to the mix, it's time to suit up. Alexa, it's time to suit up. Whatever you say, sir. Suiting up is pretty straightforward. First is your blues, shirt tucked in. Then it's the socks, pants tucked in. Add the shoes, shooters, gloves, and hoodie. When you put on the mask, make sure you tuck in the skirt of the mask into the blue shirt. As in the movie, some of the shots you can see a sliver of blue by the neck. And you're finished! Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, tap that like button and subscribe for more coming soon. If you decided to follow along and make your own, I'd love to see it. Send a pic of your hard work to check out my elefante designs at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching and until next time, stay awesome.